okay the regression output irrespective of the software which you use is going to have some key indicators so in excel this looks like the uh, what is on your screen so the key things when we are trying to interpret a regression output is what is called the adjusted r square which you can see 0.4981 okay and then you have the degrees of freedoms and other test statistics and you also have the variable with your y variable which you try to interpret which is this then you have the variable x variables which you have which you thought were going to be important to uh, predict how uh, what percentage of votes will a particular candidate get and in this case we have picked up age of the candidate we have picked up the party whether it's a national party or a regional party we have picked up whether the candidate is graduate or not we are using whether the candidate has criminal records and we are also using the asset rank of the of the, uh, 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 of the candidate which means how rich is the candidate vis-a-vis -vis the other candidates in his in his constituency okay. okay so at this stage it is good to know that what is the equation which we are trying to estimate so recall we were trying to estimate a regression equation of this format so given our problem what is y y is the candidate vote percentage beta 0 in the is the intercept term so this is the intercept term in other words beta 0 we have estimated to have a value of 8.32 what is our x1 variable x1 variable is age what is beta 1 that is 0 0.109556 x2 is a variable which which will take a value of 1 if the party is a national party and it will take its value 0 otherwise what is the coefficient of x2 that is 9.02 x3 would be a variable which will take a value of 1 if the party happens to be a regional party and if it is not a regional party then it takes a value of 0 so, so beta 3 has a value of 26.05 so this is exactly what we have done in terms of generating a regression equation now that we have done that the first question is how good a job have we done for that we need to look at what is called the adjusted r square the adjusted r square here is 0.4981 which is roughly 50 percent so what it means is that 50 percent of the values in y or the fluctuations in the values in y are explained alone by these six variables which means if you look at all the values of y there are 1699 observations which we had if you look at their values and how they differ from each across and if you were to look at the corresponding values for their age and party criminal you know, so on and so forth you would be able to do a accurate estimate of about 50 percent of these observations now is that a good number yes given that we do not have an a priori theory we are doing a very simple regression this is a good enough indication because what we are trying to say is you can look at a candidate you can predict that what is going to be roughly the vote share of this guy in the constituency and you will be right roughly half the times which is itself is a reasonably good predictive power now let's look at these coefficients now that we know it's a reasonably good predictive equation model the next thing is are all these variables playing a role or is it that some of the variables have no role to play in the regression supposing if there were some variables which has no role to play in the equation then we should drop those variables from the regression so what do we have here age does it play a role to find out whether age plays a role or not we look at the t statistics okay from your statistics primer courses and the lectures which you had you know what the values of t statistics is you also know that a high t statistics value indicates that it's a highly significant variable so how high is high a rule of thumb anything above two is high alternately we can calculate the probability values and if it is extremely low then it is very significant so how do, how did one calculate the t statistics it's a very simple calculation where the t statistics is calculated as the coefficient that is let's say beta 0 by the standard error so that would be the t statistic value for 
the intercept term. So that's 4.6053. I can similarly generate the t statistics for all the value. How significant is it? I can do, I will do a 1 minus the probability value reported to get the significance level. And I find that each one of them are significant at a very high level at almost 99% significant level, which means all the six variables which I have used have some role to play or significantly explains the vote share a candidate is going to get. Okay. The next step in interpretation, now that I have, we have found out that the variables are significant, is that do the variables have the right kind of signs in front of them? So what we have, we have some of them positive signs and one of them negative sign. Remember, we will not be able to interpret anything on the sign of the intercept. So we do not try to interpret whether the intercept sign looks all right or not. We should only be focusing on whether these variables have the right sign. So what does a positive point 0.019556 mean? It simply means between two candidates who are otherwise same on all these parameters, if you pick up two candidates, and have one candidate five years older than the other, then the chances that the older candidate will get more votes is very high. In other words, if you have two candidates, one whose age is 50 and the other whose age is 45, then the candidate who has 50 years, who is 50 years old, is more likely to get five times 0 0.10 that's about 0 0.50 percentage of more votes than the other candidate let's move to national and regional so how have we coded the variables national and regional you recall the national variable was if the candidate is from a national party then he gets one otherwise he gets zero okay which means if you pick up two candidates such that one candidate is from a national party and the other candidate is neither from a national nor from a regional party, is an independent candidate, for example, then the candidate who is from a national party is likely to get 9% more votes than the candidate who is from the independent candidate, from the independent, with, with an independent candidate. Similarly, if you pick up two candidates, one who is from a regional party and one who is neither a national or a regional party, an independent candidate, then the candidate who comes from the regional party is likely to get 26% more votes than the candidate who is from who is, an, who is an independent candidate. If you pick up two candidates, one who is a regional party and the other is from a national party, then the regional, the candidate from the regional party is likely to get 17% more, that's 26 minus 9, 17, is likely to get 17% more votes than the national can uh, the party from the national candidate so basically put if you have two identical can candidates in all dimensions they're of similar age both of them are let's say, graduate none of them have criminal records and both of them are the richest guy in the constituencies if you pick up two candidates and the only difference between them is that candidate a is from a regional party whereas candidate b is from a national party then the candidate A is likely to get 17% more vote than the candidate B. It's more likely the, regional, the candidate for the regional party is going to win. Remember, this result is only for the assembly election of West Bengal 2011. We cannot use that to predict what is going to happen in the Lok Sabha elections or, ele or assembly elections in some other states. This is only for a specific, for a specific problem. What about graduate? Well, if you are a graduate, if a candidate is a graduate, he's likely to get 6% more votes than a candidate who is not graduate. What about criminal? Not surprisingly, a candidate who has a criminal antecedent or a criminal record is more likely to get 6.82%. So that's roughly 7% more votes than a candidate who doesn't have a criminal record. What about asset rank? Now, if we notice that the asset rank is simply a rank, so rank 1 means you are the richest and rank 10 means you are the poorest among the lot in the constituency. So if you are a rich candidate, more likely, so, so, so then your score for the rank is going to be only 1. If you are a, the poorest candidate, your score is going to be 10. So a rich candidate 
it will be minus 2.6 times 1 whereas a poor candidate will be minus 26 roughly put a rich candidate compared to the poorest candidate who is ranked 10 is likely to get 24 percent more vote share now how do I come to this calculation we'll try to create some simple examples to get there so how do we do it so let's define two candidates one candidate is A and another candidate is B and how do we define on the various parameters in terms of parties A is a national party and B is an independent candidate what are their respective ages let's have candidate A whose age is 50 let's have candidate B whose age is 60 In terms of education, let's have candidate A who is a graduate and let's have candidate B who is not a graduate. Crime records, candidate A is clean and candidate B has some crime record, yes. You're just creating an example. In terms of asset rank, Candidate A happens to be the richest in the constituency, whereas candidate B asset rank in terms of it is let's say eight. He's the eighth person. So he's the A is the richest, B is the eighth person. Okay. So how do I find out who is going to get what percentage of votes? So I do a very simple part. So I've just copied the intercept and these terms and let's put up candidate A. So what are the scores he's going to get? For intercept, that's common to both parties. So both should get one. So what about B? B also gets one for the intercept. Now let's move move on to age. Candidate A is 50 years old. Candidate B is 60 years old. One of them is from the national party, which is candidate A. So he gets a one out here. Okay. Whereas B is not a national party. He gets zero. Candidate is national party, he is independent. So none of them are regional parties really. So both of them are zero. Candidate A is a graduate. What about candidate B? Candidate B is not a graduate. Candidate A has no criminal record. But candidate B has criminal record. In terms of asset rank, candidate is the richest guy. And this guy has a rank of eight. So what is the vote share which we have? To get the vote share, it is going to be beta 0 plus beta 1 x1. So I'm doing for vote share for A. Vote share for A. And similarly, I'm doing vote share for B. And all I need to do is now replicate this formula, which is this times this. And I drag it because each of the terms is nothing but beta 1 x1 beta 2 x2 for a and similarly for him for candidate B I do this and I have this so what is the vote share which I am going to have Okay, I get 26.4219 and have 0 0.81753. So what does it mean? Which means between these two candidates, A is likely to get 26% of the vote and B is only likely to get 0.81% of the vote. So this is fairly a simple way of predicting what will be the vote shares of two candidates who so may be a very similar background, maybe diverse background in a constituency. Okay. Now, this entire exercise is done without any a priori theory. So if we had a theory, and indeed there are some theories, what can what people think you know drives how much vote a candidate is going to uh, going to get in an election, then if we could have put that theory and defined some additional variables, we may have gone from an adjusted R square of fifty percent to maybe seventy five percent. In absence of that we have a reasonably okay predictive model of what is going to be the vote share of candidates in the assembly election of West Bengal to 2011. Okay, so that's step number one.
Step number two, which is always very critical when you do analytics is that you have a set of data, you get a result. Do you have any way of cross-checking the results which you have put up means anything? Is there any way to verify that whatever you're predicting is how far is it from the truth? So what is the way to do that? So let's look at some of these coefficients and let's for the time being only focus on regional and national. So what does it say? That if you're a regional party, you're likely to get 26% more votes. If you're a national party, you're likely to get 9% more votes compared to whom? Compared to all those candidates who are neither national or regional parties. Now flashback to West Bengal election 2011. The incumbent party was the Communist Party of India and they were a national party. Okay. And they lost that election after 30 odd years to Trinamul Congress, which is a regional party. And therefore, what we are saying is the in anti-incumbency effect, which means because Trinamool Congress was the regional party or AITC was the regional party and they have won the election, what we get is that in general, the candidates from the AITC were likely to get much higher percentage of vote than any other parties, including the other national parties where Basically, if you now go back to the data, you will realize that by other national parties, it is mostly the Communist Party of India. So does this result make an intuitive sense? The answer at the first cut is yes. Is it possible that we have missed out certain variables which we can, which could have done? The answer is again yes. How do we get those variables? That we need to be able to understand the theory somewhat and ask for some more some more variables. But at this stage, we started by, start, started by looking at the following, that when we are trying to do a predictive model, we need to first identify the Y variable. So did we had a clear definition of the Y variable? In this case, the answer is yes, it's a candidate vote percentage. The next thing was to identify set of X variables. Now, given the constraint in the data, the set of X variables which we identified and we when we think it could have you know, it it, uh, uh, it could play some role, well, like age of the candidate, or the kind of party he comes from, or whether the candidate is educated, or does the candidate have a criminal record? Is the candidate quite rich compared to others? So these are the set of variables which we identified. We then created some proxy variables. The proxy variable was converting from total assets to the asset rank. We ran a regression and then we got a model which can be fairly used for predictive purpose. Of course, there are some refinements which are required. Some refinement in terms of adding and dropping some variables. Some refinement in terms of what we have as various variables coming out as significant, but they need not be significant for all those refinements as well as some co some further complicated concepts which we cannot handle at this stage it is advisable to use a statistical software and they, and therefore what we are going to do 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 now is we'll ask you to do the set of regression exercises using sas